here in beautiful downtown Atlanta, Russ Chandler Stadium, the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. We started with eight, we're down to four, and after this game, we're down to three. First things first, the ninth meeting between Florida A&M and Alabama State this season. The ninth chapter of this terrific rivalry will be rewritten coming up here on the SWAC Digital Network. Glad you can join us, everyone. Happy holidays, Memorial Day holiday. Hope you're enjoying it, and we know we'll enjoy this one as these two teams meet for the third time in this tournament. You look at Florida A&M and what they've done. Of course, playing Alabama State has been games. Roger Kador, as we you join us here, come from behind wins on both sides. And this is the third meeting. The AMU was an inning away. Bama State gets five and wins that. And then Florida A&M gets a seven-run inning, pulls away, wins eight to six. And here we are. The winner of this game plays tomorrow for the championship. How wonderful it is to have you back for an encore. You know, <laughs> little did we know, we last time you and I were together, we were thinking this was it for this year. But we're here today, great games yesterday. I mean, when teams showed a lot of heart, heart to be here. And, uh, you know, right now, it's all who wants it the most. And as you look at the lineup, as Alabama State is the home team, so Florida A&M will bat first. Top of the lineup, the two ties, Ty Jackson and Ty Hanji with Jared Weber. Ristardo, he's had a terrific tournament. Griffin Long with Will Brown. Hader Mata, Jay Niles. Ben Kim getting the start in left, and Trey Simmons, the lineup. What has impressed you here, Roger Cador, about both of these teams? You've seen them all weekend long. What's impressed you first for the Rattlers of Florida A&M? Why do you think they're here right now, one win away from playing for the championship? The heart and determination. I got to give them that. They get an A-plus on that. And they never gave up. You know, it looked bad for them. You know, that heart-grinching loss that they had on, uh, on t Thursday. But they came back and win, won two games yesterday. So let's see what happens again today. Because now you got to think your bullpen is a little thin. So it's the, who wants it the most, uh, Charles, is going to win this game? And then a lot of talk even prior to the tournament. Alabama State, Alabama State, the one seed in the East, and Florida and m has given them the business. What has made Alabama State so good and the hiccups that they've had along the way, even though they're one win away from playing for their second straight tournament championship? Well, you know, I, I was hoping that most people, coaches didn't think it was going to, because of your ranking, seed that you were going to win it's all about what happens between the line and it and from the history of the swag tournament it's hungriness teams that are hungry underdog want to prove something usually come out victorious should be fun the first of two games later it will be bethune cookman and grambling three teams from the east one from the west grambling the lone representative from the western division still alive They'll take on Bethune-Cookman later. Centoria Black will have that call. Our producer, James Crenshaw and crew, doing a great job. We'll check in with Charles Bishop in a moment as we are ready on this 70-degree day. Wind will be a factor. Wind out of the west at 14 miles an hour and gusty. Here is the first pitch. Misses ball one from the lefty, Adil Melendez. 2-0 during the season with a 3.80 earned run average, working out of the stretch position with no one on base. And the count is 2-0 to Ty Jackson. He had 366 during the regular year with three home runs and 25 runs batted in during the season. Jackson, 250 in the postseason. The pitch, swing and a miss. Charles Bishop, you feel the energy here. These two teams meet for the ninth time. There are no secrets. There are no secrets, Charles. And like you said, you can definitely feel the energy in the ballpark. One of the things that you got from both po both coaches, these teams will compete no matter what today. Yeah, Florida a and was on their way to a win in the first meeting. And Bama State gets five in the ninth, a walk-off. And then Florida a and rallies for game two, eight to six, even though Bama State 
got a couple of runs late yesterday. I so. think also, Charles, the, the team that stays aggressive, it's going to play uh, aggressiveness is going to play a, play a key role here because you don't want to sit back and wait for the big hit. Find a way to get the defense moving, create holes. The 2-2 pitch to Ty Jackson leading it off. That's a 3-2 pitch, ball four. Well, we're going back to the stats. Lead off walks, what happened? 63% of the time they usually score. And they'll bring up the other tie. Ty Hanshi. Seven for seven is Ty Jackson in stolen bases during the course of the season. And Ty Jackson with one stolen base here in the SWAC tournament. So you have a lefty on lefty with Hanshi hitting 366. And this curve, and he was hit. So a walk and an HBP and two on for FAMU. And that's something Florida uh, FAMU haven't been able to score early in the, any of the games we've seen. Am I correct? Yeah. So let's see if they're able to do something early here. Now this could be a situation where a bunt is old. Alabama State is not playing around. They're sending people to the bullpen. Yeah, talking with uh, Coach Vasquez in the seventh season. And he, he basically said he's not going to mess around. Here's a shot to short. Could be two. Six, four, three. Double play. Runner to third. Six, four, three. Double play if you're scoring at home. A one hopper to McIntosh. Over to Flores, over to first, Corey King, a 6-4. They call that a tailor-made double play. I tell you, this is almost as good as your mother's cooking. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. Well, it moves Jackson to third. So, fame, you got what they wanted, a runner in scoring position. Bama State got what they wanted, a double play, two out. There's a long one, deep left field, and this will put the Rattlers on the board. A two-run home run by Bestardo. Good start for the Rattlers. And he has had a terrific postseason. That is his third home run in the tournament. FAMU with an early lead. I tell you what, Charles, no amount of win was going to keep that one in the ballpark. That was a no-doubter. Yes, it was. That may have been one of the longest home runs hit in this tournament. He got that one high up in the air. There was no doubt about it. The left fielder, hey, all he could do is look and watch. Now, remember, the first run score, well, how did he get on? Lead off walk. 63% of the time. We're giving people the stats so if we highlight for all of you young people out there listening, you don't want to walk people. Or if you're on the offense, you want to walk. That means you'll score a lot. And the HBP also yes. helped Florida and ms cause. Every little nuance matters. Even though the double play helped Bama State, Bastardo puts his team out in front, and Griffin Law on the DH stands in. 2 nothing FAMU here in the ninth meeting during this regular season between these two teams. The third here in this postseason. And Charles, we want to go back. Baseball is a game of failure. If you're successful 30 times, you're really good. And 63% of the time you get on base, that's really something. It's more than half of what the average is for being successful. Right now, the Rattlers are definitely successful in this inning. Two-run home run by Bastardo. As Hanchi scored in front of Bastardo. The count is two on one. Well, Coach uh, Vasquez, obviously, Roger Cador getting the bullpen busy early, sensing something, and Florida and off to an early start. Yeah, uh, well, he, he doesn't want to take a chance of falling too far behind, and I don't blame him. When you're scheduled, this is one of the things you wear on your shoulder or your back when you're the schedule, pick to win it, you know what I'm saying? You got to do it because people expect you to. Back to back. Here's a shot up the middle. And then throw from short, low, but out from the shortstop McIntosh. The side is it retired. But at Florida and m two runs, one hit, the home run by Bestardo, touching them all 
Early lead for the Rattlers. Two to nothing as FAMU will send the junior righty Trey Simmons to the mound. Half inning complete here in this elimination game. FAMU 2, Bama State coming up bottom one here on the SWAC Digital Network. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. Skyline over beautiful downtown Atlanta. Glad you can join us here on the SWAC Digital Network. McNeese Ballpark, and what a start to this one for FAMU. A two-run home run by Jamekiel Bistardo. His third home run in the tournament, as you see, the Alabama State lineup with Randy Flores leading it off. Kyler McIntosh hitting second. Moto hitting third, followed by Jack Hay. Ali Red will hit fifth, Corey King, Christian Lopez, Trenton Jameson, Jamal George, and of course, Adel Melendez. We'll see how long he'll go as Florida A&M has gotten to him early. And now for Bama State, Andy Flores leading it off. Pitch strike called from the lefty, Trey Simmons. One and three during the year. Pitch strike call to his home plate umpire, Brian Clark, Randall Montgomery, the first base umpire, Joseph Smith at second, Kevin Bradley at third. 2 nothing. Bama State trails early. This pitch is up and in. This, Roger Cador, this Florida a &M team, hit 295 during the season, fourth best in the league behind Bama State, Jackson State, and Texas Southern at the plate. And there's a shot in the center field and left center with the wind, and it's caught in left center. One away by the center fielder, Ty Jackson. One away. And it'll bring up Kyler McIntosh. This ball was well hit, Roger Kador. Flores has hit the ball well all, all, all tournament. He hadn't got a lot of hits to show for it, but I like the way he swings the bat. He had 10 home runs during the regular year. It's the pitch, strike called. Charles Bishop, we, we talked with Coach Vasquez. This is not a surprise. These two teams battling his team, trying to win their second straight SWAC tournament, trails early. No doubt about it, Coach Vasquez said, and he knew that this was going to be a battle. I mean, when you take a look at this uh, Florida a and offense, one thing Coach Shoup said is they will hit the baseball. Five guys in this lineup today hitting 400 or better. Two hopper Niles at short. Long throw, strong throw, two out. Niles has made a name for himself in this tournament. He came in a, an underappreciated player, but his defensive crawl have made him recognizable by everyone here. That matters and when we're talking about the All-Star selection. Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, I have read some names that uh, will be in Seattle. Ooh, good. We'll talk about that as we go along. You know the right people. <laughs> It'll bring up Santos <laughs> in this pitch. Strike long as call. you didn't get it off of that web that uh, Charles <laughs> got, Bishop has got. And Matos at the plate. 356 during the season. Matos fouls that straight back. Now Look. he's had, he showed a really good quick 
short swing there, Charles. Even though he, the ball got fouled back, but I like the quick short swing. And this pitcher already, Roger Cador, has gotten ahead of the count here in the first couple of batters. Yeah, he's doing a good job. This ball high. The thing that concerns me with him is that you look at him, he's falling to the sides. And when he, you get into third, fourth inning and he gets a little tired, will it be an issue? Pitch to Matos, see, high. You see how he's falling? That's always when your mechanics ain't right, the, the more pitches you throw, you get become a little fatigued and then you get a little more out of whack. Coach, is that due to lack of innings? Oh, it could not necessarily, it's just, uh, I just think that he probably have enjoyed some success doing it, and uh, and they allow him to stay with it because they probably worked with trying to get him to be a little more up and down. After being ahead in the count, it's a full count. Fly ball off to the right side. Matos 356 during the year with nine home runs and 46 runs batted in for Alabama State. Alabama State won 41 games. 41 and 17 is their record. Won the tournament last year, played in the Tennessee Regional. Another Good foul. Fight. Good fight. Where the fight? He's not trying to do too much. Notice he's just trying to fight the ball off. Cal remains full, three and two, in case you're just joining us. Two nothing. FAMU on a two run home run by Bestardo, his third of the tournament. There's a fly ball, mile that high in the air. Might fall in, might fall in. Look at the left fielder That's did a good job. be a running catch. Good play. Man, we've seen some nice plays all weekend. Dan Kim ends the inning. One, two, three inning. The wind held it up a little bit. And let's watch this as Dan Kim. Getting the start in left. Doesn't come into the picture until now. As he makes the nice running catch, the side is retired. We'll take a break. 2-0. FAMU with Will Brown, Adam Hader-Mota, and Jalen Niles coming up next here on the SWAC Digital Network. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. dropping <laughs> rapid rehydration initiated unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes rapid rehydration to get you back on your game gator light now available in powder and gator light zero sugar Nike, one of the proud sponsors of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Two to nothing, FAMU on a two-run home run. By Jim Michael Bastardo, his third home run in the SWAC tournament. Pitches low, ball one to Will Brown, the second baseman. Brown 261 during the season. And Will Brown hitting 500 in the postseason, his 11th at bat with three runs batted in. Bastardo and Mack from Gremlin are the two Guys who've hit the most home runs. Mack has three also. Yeah, but we've seen some flashes of power. The count is 2-0. and oh. And Charles Bishop, here comes Coach Jose Vasquez in his seventh season, was named Bama State's baseball coach July 13, 2016. And Bama State has played in the SWAC championship game three of the last four years, but they're under it here, Charles Bishop. And uh, Coach Vasquez with an early mound visit. Yeah, early mound visit to try to settle down his pitcher and try to get him in the strike zone. But uh, as you uh, mentioned earlier, that bullpen is up and working. 
That was a quick. He only said two or three words. <laughs> I don't know if we can repeat them. <laughs> were, no, your, no. were your mouth visits, Coach Cador, were they were they quick? Were they long? Every now and then. <laughs> I never wanted a long mouth visit. You know, because, you again, you don't want to put too much on the pitcher's mind. Yeah. But, boy, this was one, two or three words. You know, sometimes that's what all it takes, you know. We have seen in the tournament where coaches come out, settle their pitcher down, and they get it done for the for that time being. And this pitch is high, three and zero. Oh. You know, it's it's really uh, athletic competition. It's not easy. Let me put it that way. Here's the three zero oh. strike call. Three See, and he one. took something off of that pitch and not tried to overthrow. I noticed with Platoon Cookman last night, coach went out there and the pitcher. Probably said, don't overthrow the ball. And he began to throw it in the throw strikes. There's a long one, hook foul off to the left side. What do you see, Roger Cador, in this Baba State pitcher, Melendez? 2 0 during the year. This is his first start of the year. Didn't start one game during the regular year. Well, you know, if he doesn't overthrow, he's, he could be effective. There you go. I think we got an umpire with a. This umpire is not the best umpire for this kind of game. He's got a small zone. I mentioned that when he was behind the plate uh, earlier, uh, maybe on Wednesday or Thursday. He's a good umpire, but his zone is not as big. You got me? Well, quicker walk to the mound, and it looks like we've got a pitching change coming up here. And, and we will take a break here. And we'll talk about it coming up. Pitching change coming up as the starting pitcher for Alabama State and Dio Melendez goes one inning. Pitching change coming up. We'll tell you about it after this timeout on the SWAC Digital Network. New pitcher in the game for Alabama State, Sebastian Cologne, three and three during the season with three saves. On the mound for the Hornets as Alabama State starting pitcher went one inning. The ground ball foul off to the left side. Yeah, Coach Vasquez had a few words for the umpire as he was leaving the field, you know. And then he thought, took his helmet off and put it down very gently without – so it fell off once he did that. <laughs> yeah, to your point, Coach, you're very frustrated down here in the dugout. Yeah, very I could believe it. You know, and, and, you know, the thing is, I think – I don't know much about this umpire – but you know, you still got to understand. You, you, this is a, a, a day before championship. The pitching is going to be a little on the lean side, and you got to work with them a little. You understand? You can't have a small strike zone. Here, Mota at the plate, hitting 308 in the regular season. And 400 in the postseason, the 16th at bat with six hits. There's a long one down the left side. And it's if, you don't hit, if you don't hit it here, the, the Brock is not going to stay fair. 
There's something tricky going on down there, Charles. Down the left field line, those balls never stay fair when you jerk them just a little. Count is 0-2. Bottom of the lineup for Florida a &M. That was a really good swing right there. Coach, you did talk about it yesterday. That left field line, it, it is a very, very short porch down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But something happens that with balls that are hit down the line, they never stay fair. This pitcher, Sebastian Colon. This is his second appearance in the SWAC tournament. He's pitched just one inning. Fastball just missed. Let's see. Roger Cater of the strike zone, and I know the strike zone's the strike zone. <laughs> Does, I mean, in the reality, whether you're playing in the regionals, whether you're playing in your conference tournament, the super regionals, the wild card, is, is it a safe assumption that the strike zone shrinks just a little in the postseason, regardless no, of what level of baseball? it should never. It should never. Uh, and people can say whatever they want, you know, you, when you're dealing with amateur baseball, you have to you have to take into consideration what you're dealing with. You know, this is not big league. So a pitch that's right like this off the plate, it's acceptable to call it a strike at this level. Mm -hmm. And you make to keep the game going, it makes it a quality game. And nobody's gonna say anything. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. This is popped up. Left side. Foul territory. Is there a play? No. The reason why I asked that question, watching and doing regionals, and you hear players talk about it, it seems a lot, and, and maybe it's not true, whatever the case, but it seems like the strike zone that you see in, a, in your conference tournament, you get to the regionals, it's, it, it, to them it seems different. It, it just may be just the frustration of not getting what you expect to look at in the regionals as far as the strike zone. Here's well, a 2-2. Two -two. I went to 11 regionals, and the strike zone wasn't that different. If anything, it was a little wider. Okay. You got me? Because I think they understood. We can't have people walking 15, 16 hitters. Then the quality of the game is really bad. You got me? Well, a big strike out there. One out. One on for the shortstop, Jalen Niles. And he pops this up. In foul territory, there is a play. And it's going to be caught at first for the second out by King. Two away. Whoa, very boisterous crowd here, Charles Bishop. Both sides. I mean, it's so much on the line. And you know, you know, Coach Vasquez talked to us about it before the game. I mean, we're approaching almost 60 games played over several months, different weather conditions. It's a grind getting through a college baseball season, Charles Bishop. A lot at stake. It is a lot at stake today, and I tell you what, uh, you can feel uh, the intensity here in the stadium. Both fan bases are really, really into every pitch. Yeah, yeah, sitting on the edge of their seat with the freshman Ben Kim at the plate for Florida A&M. Just 37 at-bats during the season. He had 216 with three runs batted in. This is the number nine hitter for the Rattlers. And Charles, the winner of the conference tournament receives a bonus. You know, the uh, the coach, you understand? So there are some, uh, some material things involved or financial benefits uh, involved that benefits the coach and his family. Anytime you win a championship, it's it's beneficial to everyone. The university, the athletic department. There's a pitch strike called from our playing umpire Ben Clark and Ben Kim didn't like the call. But I think he the other day he got better as the game went along. Umpire Clark, he got much better. So he's going to get better. He's feeling them out, you know. Here's the one two, inning over. The thing I like about him, but he's been consistent. He was consistent in what he did. So the leadoff walk by Brown. He's left stranded, first stranded runner in this game. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Two-nothing, FAMU on the two-run home run by Bistardo.
Four, five, and six coming up for Bama State. Jack Hay, Ali Lepron, and Corey King after this on the SWAC Digital Network. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Here in Atlanta, bottom of the second inning. Four, five, and six in the lineup. First up, Jack Hay, the left fielder. And he pops this up, out of play. We are underway. Roger Kador. Yes, sir. What would, what would I, if I told you before the tournament, four teams that are left, top three seeds in the East. left remaining is Hay, a shot in the right center. It's gonna drop for a base hit. Lead off is on for Bama State. The left fielder, Jack Hayes, singles to right to lead it off for the Hornets. If I told you the top three seeds from the East and only one team from the West remaining in the final four, you would have said what? That's a good choice. But I wouldn't have picked them probably. I would have probably picked Gramlin. And uh, I was thinking uh, Texas Southern might be a dark horse. I had my concerns about Southern because of their offense. Oh, you had sputtered, you know? But uh, but I like the teams that were in the East based upon pitching. Cookman and, and FAMU, but we knew Alabama State was the best team the out of all of the teams in the league when they had the best personnel. That bread at the plate for Alabama State. Hit 385 during the regular year. Freshman with a home run and 13 runs batted in. Pitch strike called, and he didn't like that call. Well, it's better the, the umpire's calling strikes. He's going in the long run. He will be okay. He forced kids to swing the bat, and he won't be shouldering all the responsibility. Count is one and two. That's one outside. Two and two. Well, Charles Bishop, for all the talk of the East being a pitcher heavy division you know fam use coach told us we can swing the bats too <laughs> uh, he said the reason we're here is because yeah. we swing the bats <laughs> yeah and uh so clearly they're scoring some runs this is poke foul and look i hey it shows you what i know the fact that the east yes they do have quality pitching there's no question about it but charles bishop we're seeing a bunch of runs being scored all over the place yeah, we're definitely seeing a bunch of runs being scored, and, and, and it's about quality of bats. Each coach has talked about going up there, clearing your head, and having a quality of bat. And, Coach, you mentioned it, you, you know, short swings, uh, getting your getting the bat head through the, uh, through, the, uh, through the hitting zone, and these guys are putting it on display. Yes, they've done that. And I remember all of the rallies, the guys were doing short swings, taking the ball up the middle. Brown ball and Niles could be two, six, four, and it's a fielder's choice here. And you, and you talked about quality at bat. There was one right there fouling off a bunch of pitches. Well, well you want to put the ball in play and on the ground. You know, I had, I, I had a call from one of my former players from Pasadena, California this morning. And he said, Coach, he said, you know, you told us something every day about 
the value of hitting the ball on the ground. He said, when you hit it in the air, they only have to do one thing, catch it. But if you hit it on the ground, they got to catch it. They have to throw it. The player you throw it to got to catch it. And then the umpire got to make the call. You got to field it cleanly, too. Yeah, right. So there's four things got to happen. Corey King hit 298 during the season. One-on-one -on -one out. King slaps this one right, down the left side, foul. and it's foul. It's amazing how those balls continue to slice foul down there. The left a, field vortex down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Bishop just created another phrase. What, left, it, what, what, a left field what, Charles Bishop? That left field vortex <laughs> down there. Vortex, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've gone from the jet stream to the vortex. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's amazing <laughs> what happened. That ball I thought had a chance. Well, the – it has been talked about in the weather parameters the last couple of days. Today is a beautiful day, but it was going to be a windy day. Here's a swing and a missed foul tip. Catcher held it. Ty Hanchi held on. It'll bring up the third baseman, Christian Lopez. Hit 321 during the season with five home runs and 54 runs batted in. I really have no problem with him striking out. I like the fact that they're aggressive. My thing is, if you continue to be aggressive, you it'll pay it'll pay dividends. But it's the non-aggressive kid that is not going to be able to do anything. Stay aggressive. Don't worry about the strikeout. It's a part of the game. You know, we'll have to pay attention to Lopez's uh, swings today. Remember, he had that uh, wrist injury yesterday in that game against Van. Yeah. I was just telling uh, Charles that I see his mother is in the stand. She's got his n number and jersey on, on, with the name in the number 24. We'll see what he does at the plate here, and the count is 2-0. and oh. He want to do it for Mama. They check it first. First base umpire Randall Montgomery says he did not go around. Count is 3-0. and oh. State with a leadoff walk to Brown. Here's the pitch. Strike called. You know, single to Jack Hay in a fielder's choice. Lap red is at first. Corey King struck out. A two out in the inning. This pitch misses outside. Ball four. So two on for the Hornets. Two outs. Have two and two, two on and two out for the number eight hitter, Trenton Jamison. Five home runs, 38 runs batted in. Bottom of the lineup. You've got the number nine hitter with six home runs, Jamison the number eight hitter with five. And this has popped up, mile high, straight up the silo. Dead center, and it's gonna be caught by Jackson and the Hornets strand two. So a single, a fielder's choice, a walk, and two left. We have played two. Two nothing. Lord A&M on the two run home run by Bistardo. Top of the lineup coming up top three after this on the SWAC Digital Network.
Ty Jackson leading it off. Walked his first time up. Jackson, a base hit. A lead off the top of the third inning. Jackson on base twice. Jumped on the first pitch from Cologne. It's his second inning of work. That'll bring up Ty Hanchi was hit by a pitch. Well, Roger Cador, third inning in a row. It's a solid single there by Jackson. The first three innings, the leadoff has been on for FAMU. Yeah, FAMU is the aggressive right now. He's swinging, and he pulls this one foul off to the right side. The winner of this game advances to the championship game. We're, we're doing a little checking here to find out the last time we've had two games on Saturday. There have been times, of course, where there's been one game or no games as both teams win their brackets, but we've got two here. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember. So you did you did ask me, so I'm not a good source of information. Yeah, I, I would. We'll have a, we'll have our swack of folks check that out because it is unusual. This pitch misses outside, and Charles Bishop, it, that's a good thing. There's there's no, there's no, nothing no. wrong with that, Charles Bishop. I mean, it just shows you the, the competitiveness of swack baseball. You just can't assume the top seeds are going to just rush their way into the championship. Other teams like Bethune, Cookman, and FAMU in this case have a say about it. Exactly, and I think uh, we've talked about it with the coaches. Uh, they have talked about the parity within this league all season, especially within this tournament. So no surprises, we're playing ball today. Two and two the count. There's a base hit left center field. Jackson around second, motors in the third, and the throw is cut off. First and third for FAMU. Well, back-to-back -back singles, Jackson and now Hanchi, Roger Cador. Rattlers are in business again. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I like what FAMU is doing. They, they're confident. They've taken the batter to Alabama State. And, uh, you know, Alabama State just can't stop them right now. And this is what happens when you put men on base every inning. You put the pressure. Jerry Weber at the plate. Pitch strike call from Cologne. Cologne's second appearance in the SWAC tournament. He pitched just one inning previously. Rattlers with a 2-0 lead. Winner of this game plays tomorrow for the championship. Outside. I know the Bible has nothing to do with sports and yet, but it said the race doesn't always belong to the swiftest or the strongest. It's the one that is consistent in doing the will. You got me? Well, in the East, this is the third meeting in this tournament. It's come down to the last inning. There's a ground ball foul. It's come down to the last at bat. The last at bat, exactly. Count is one and two. And you kind of feel like if Bama State gets something going, you kind of feel like it's going to be the same way. But right now, old Mo, old momentum right now is with the Rattlers. First and third, nobody out up to nothing. What I was looking to see from Alabama State, it's not the coaches. But the, where's that leadership from the player? You know what I'm saying? Because it's so much better when there is a leader that can rally his troop. The coaches do, does that part, but the, it's something about the individual player who could get his teammates to follow him. Pitch up and in, and of course, the Hornets won the tournament last year. It's been, you know, it's been one of those years, a lot of talk about Bama State winning the East. And remember, these two teams played the last weekend of the regular season. Now, in terms of seedings, it didn't matter much. This has popped up. Foul oh, territory. Uh -oh, uh -oh, Catcher uh -oh. tosses the Watch mask, stumble over the mask, and makes the catch. Third baseman, where are you? Jamal George tossed the mask and then stumbled over the mask and still made the catch. 
Let's take a look at it. This is a classic teaching moment. Never let your catcher catch the ball, third baseman, if you can catch it. What does he do? He stops, and then the mask is thrown. This is what almost a disaster. And the wind blew that thing back in the fair territory, Charles Bishop. Uh, that was what I was noticing. I mean, <laughs> the top spin in the wind, and I tell you what, it was almost disaster. Something is going on. The Alabama State is not playing like a, a real true champion right now. Well, here's a diving catch here at third. A couple of plays on the left side. The catcher, George, and the third baseman, Lopez, with a tricky catch in foul territory. This is an easy, Roger Kador. Very easy. Third base coach for the Rattlers, Brett Richardson, <laughs> didn't move. <laughs> Gonzalez. Mm, but he, I but mean, he, uh, Gomez. <laughs> oh, oh, Lopez, I'm sorry. Makes the catch. And there's a ground ball to second. And just like that, the inning is over. The first two, Jackson and Hanchi reach base. Two foul ball outs and a ground ball in the second. The side is retired. And you know they're only down two runs, so it's not like a monumental thing they have to overcome. Bottom of the third inning, 9-1-2. and two. George Flores and McIntosh for Bama State coming up after this here on the SWAC Digital Network. Early momentum with FAMU, but the Alma State getting out of some jams. And George, pitch on the inside corner, didn't like that call. Only one. Nice, nine, oh, and two. Florida a a two run home run. And Jermichael Bristardo, his third home run of the tournament. Top of the first inning. It started off with a walk to Ty Jackson. Then Hanchi was hit. Weber hit into a double play. And then Bristardo with the home run. Count is two and two. So after falling behind, count is even two and two. In the bottom of the third inning. Now the count is full. He's showing good patience. The three two. Now well, he came back to get a walk. What about that at bat, Roger Cador? He was behind in the count. He was frustrated with the first pitch, was behind 0 2, and draws a walk. That's why you can't ever give up. And what happened when the leadoff 
Walk. That's the second inning in a row, too, that the leadoff has been on for Bama State. 63% of the time, it's starting to burn in my head, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Top of the lineup. Flores takes a pitch high. Flores fly to center his last time up. And remember we talked about uh, the pitcher's mechanics, how they can be laid on, how they can get out of whack. He's falling all over the place, so what, let's watch and see what happens. One and one to the leadoff. Ooh. Throw to first. So at the bottom of the lineup, Jamal George's eight stolen bases. Looks like Flora is swinging away here with the leadoff on. And ground ball to first, steps on first and safe at second. So the lead runners at second. Three six. I'm out of throwing. Let's take I'm a look at throwing it. the ball to second first. Get that lead runner. I was just about to ask, what, what was the play on that? Well, he was trying to get a double play, but the arch probably was going to be a little difficult because of the two long throws. The long throw from first, and, uh, you know, let's see. See right here, the long throw. So he should have thrown it across first. Yeah, throw it to f second, first. Get that lead runner. What? Yeah, you say the foot was off the bag as well. Well, his foot didn't have to be on the bag. It was not a force. He had to tag him out. There's a difference because they, there was no occupied. It's like was a base attempt to steal at that point. So a runner at second, a chance for Bama State. In the second inning, Hay led off with a single. And in the third, a leadoff walk, now runner at second. In George. There's a fly ball here. Down the line and it's caught right off the rail at first. We've had some plays, Roger Kickador, close to the rail as Weber hauls it in. Well, you hi you you highlighting the, the play by the uh, rail. I'm highlighting how the disappointment in the swing that he took. That to me, that's what's more important because that's the result you're going to get with that kind of swing. You got a man on second, and you take that kind of swing, you're not going to get a positive result. Yeah, didn't, didn't move the runner along either. Matos at the plate. He fly to left his last time up. Chance for Bama State to get on the board. And this has popped up. Foul territory. And it's going to land about six rows up. It's getting closer, <laughs> James. It's getting closer. <laughs> well, Charles Bishop, some opportunities here for... Alabama State off to a shaky start, but they're getting base runners on and an opportunity here to get on the board. Yeah, opportunity here to get on the board. This uh, first part of, of the game has been like a, a boxing match, a classic overhand right by Hagler uh, for FAMU here in the early part. But let's see, can Alabama State counter? And the way these games have gone, this is the third meeting in this postseason, the ninth meeting this season. Who knows what's going to happen? You've had rallies by both teams late in the previous two games. Here's a round ball on the third on a hop, and the inning is over. Ground ball to Hater Moda. The side is retired. So for the second inning in a row, the leadoff has been on, and the Hornets strand their third runner. We'll take a break right here. As the top of the fourth inning coming up 2-0. FAMU with the lead with Will Brown, Adam hader Moda, and Jalen Nile, 6, 7, and 8. Coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network.
join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look, to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Here in Atlanta, windy Saturday afternoon here in the ATL. Wind gusting 15 miles an hour or more. Will Brown leading it off. Walked his last time up. Here's a shot down the left side and it's gonna go all the way to the wall. Off the wall, a double for Brown to lead it off for the Rattlers. Will Brown on base for the second time. He had a really good cut at that. Well, again, Roger Cador, this is the fourth straight inning. All four innings, the leadoff. And we can't stress this enough how important two-thirds of the time when you get the leadoff, on base, you score, and yeah. they've been and they've had to lead off on base every inning, and that's why they well, it's part of the reason they're leading. Hater Mota at the plate. There's a base hit up the middle. Brown had to hold up. Brett Richardson holds him up at third, and the Rattlers have first and third, nobody out. And they have out hit. Baseball is so much about the attitude you bring to the park. It's not always about the physical attributes. It's about the attitude you bring, the attitude you bring to the park. And fame, you brought the right one. It's about foul off to the right side. I mean, you take a look at, you know, the games in this tournament. They beat Texas Southern nine to one, had a four run lead against Bama State, lost that nine to eight, beat Prairie View one to nothing, <laughs> and then had an eight three lead on a seven run inning and to hold them off eight to six, and here they are looking at him again. There's a fly ball right side. This ball might, well should drive home a run. It's gonna be caught in right. Throw comes in the second, a sack fly by Niles. Scoring Brown. And the Rattlers lead three to nothing. See, they're doing the fundamental thing. You know, you needed to get the ball up in the air. He did, and then he got knocked in another run. Well, Charles Bishop, it's it's fun when you see a team playing with a new lease on life. I mean, fam, you your back's against the wall. I mean, you 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 look at the Rattlers. This is their third elimination game. They lost that game 9-8. to eight. They beat Prairie View. They beat Bama State yesterday. Well, it's just fun to watch when you see a team, you know, backs against the wall in the corner trying to fight and stay alive and you're seeing that from the Rattlers. And, and so far, uh, Charles, they're doing all the little things. Like you mentioned, uh, great sacrifice, great at bat that time, driving in that run. Uh, but they're doing all the little things right. And like you said, Coach, uh, they are loosey-goosey over there in that dugout. They're all into it. And they brought the right attitude today. They have their right attitude. I'm trying to show Charles my boxing, boxing skills, <laughs> but he won't pay me any attention. 
<laughs> I don't want to get hit, Coach. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want the uppercut. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Here's the 0-2. Misses outside. And, and also, Roger Cater, you talk and we talk with head coach for family, Jamie Shute, you know, all week. I mean, just as loose as can be, unflappable, doesn't get rattled. A rattler doesn't get rattled. He, <laughs> he doesn't get rattled. I mean, hey. You know, you, you compete, you go after it, and you live with the results, and they're doing that. And the results are good so far. There's a fly ball to the left, and it's going to be caught and left by Hay. Yeah, the uh, you know, and it's the same thing with the uh, Coach Hernandez from per uh, Bethune-Cookman. He's just got the most wonderful personality. He's loose, and that's why their teams are playing loose. Everybody else is playing tight, like if – that job's on the line, and it's far from that. You know what I'm saying? That's a good baseball. Of course, Coach Pierre, head coach at Grambling, pitches low, taking over for James Cooper, who took a job in the Yankees organization down in Tampa. As his team, one win away. And we'll, of course, Bethune-Cookman and Grambling coming up next. Santoria Black will have the call of that one. I have Santoria. You have Santoria. Oh, my goodness. Oh, here's a shot in the deep left center field, but it's going to be caught in center by Matos. And the side is retired, but Lord a and adds to their lead. A run on two hits, a sacrifice fly, and one left. Rattlers have stranded four. The Hornets have stranded three. Bottom four coming up. Hey, Upred and King coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network. Middle of the lineup for Bama State, three to nothing. And Jack Hay at the plate. He has the only single in this game for Alabama State. Charles Edmond here with the Hall of Famer Roger Cador. Charles Bishop with our mid-game interviews and post-game. He'll have that coming up in the next inning. James Crenshaw and crew doing a fantastic job with the replays and all the good camera work and angles, the replays. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Of course, another game coming up later, and ESPN will take it over tomorrow. All right, uh, Roger Kador, put your manager hat on. Here it is. It's still too early. It's Bama State. They've only had one hit, and they're down three to nothing. If you're Coach Vasquez, a lot to say right now to your team. I would have been saying all along, hey, guys, stay patient. Try to concentrate on taking the ball up the middle. We can get it. We, the game is still in reach. We got him where we want him. Pitch to Hay. And a base hit taking it the other way. <laughs> right on cue, Roger Kador. He's two for two. He's got both of the Hornets hit so far in this game. Well, I pick him to click whether or not I said it or not. He's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, Jack Hay came into the, today's game batting 636. That is his ninth hit of the tournament. There it is. He's just got a good short stroke. Now, the thing is right here, don't try to take a big swing. He, the pitcher's already providing the, uh, the thing you need, the velocity. Well, that breed, a fly ball in the deep center. This ball Tag. Oh. is well hit. A uh, step from the track is hauled in <laughs> in center by Jackson. <laughs> I was going to ask about a sacrifice right there. No. You're down three. You don't want to give away outs. You know, you, you because you got all year long, you have to play the way you played. They weren't giving away outs like that. So he wants these guys, but they have to be a little more disciplined with their swings. Corey King at the plate, and there's a base hit slapped in the left field. Two on for the Hornets. Now, it wasn't a wild, hard swing. It was a short stroke. And this is what they how they played all year, you know. Again, leadoff Ron for Alabama State. And Christian Lopez walked his last time up. Remember, he hurt his left wrist yesterday diving for a ball at shortstop. Time called. Now Lopez digs in. This pitch is this inside, is a, ball one. This is about the inning that a pitcher like uh, that's pitching here for Florida. For Simmons? Simmons. Simmons run into trouble because remember I mentioned his mechanics. They hadn't been the very best. The lo you get a little tired. That, that is There's another hit. Face hit. That pitch was up. It's going to be waved home and the throw in the second. Alabama State on the board. And listen, it wasn't a hard, wild swing. This is the inning I mentioned around third, fourth, fifth inning Simmons. Because his mechanic is not the best, they should be able to start taking advantage of it. Charles Bishop, this Eastern Division rivalry, you never know what to expect. And here come the Hornets. Here come the Hornets. Like I said, uh, this is like a great boxing match. Uh, <laughs> Fam, you, they landed the early blow, but here come the Hornets. And here comes Coach Shoot. And he's going to pay his mound visit. There's no one throwing in the bullpen. Now, he did tell us that he's got four pitchers that has yet to pitch in this tournament. He has another pitcher that has pitched just one inning. That's what he has left. So, in, in order to have that, Coach Kador, and he mentioned that to us four, and I had to have him kind of reiterate, you mean four arms that has not pitched in this tournament. He says yes, and he has another pitcher that's only pitched one inning. There is a probably a reason they haven't pitched. <laughs> well, it's got the, the solid pitching. Uh, or no. they don't trust them. <laughs> the solid pitchers, you run them out there. Because he had a chance yesterday when they were scoring late. You remember? Yeah. No, it's just because of the lack of uh, confidence you got you have in them. He have them, but, you know, he prefer not to use them. Just trying to settle down Simmons. First and second pitches a strike called to Trenton Jamison. The DH fly to center his last time up. I've had four or five I hadn't pitched. I don't want to meet him. I didn't want to pitch him either. I've had him. 0-1. <laughs> oh first and second. Time run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate. This pitch is low. You got to understand. Coaches are under pressure when they, they want to win. And uh, they're ready to go with people who've been out there more often, you know? Simmons has started seven games this year. A big swing See, and a now, miss. This is the kind of swings you do not want. Remember, they got three hits where they just took nice basic swings. These wild swings don't have no benefit. He was on a knee trying to hit that one. Yeah. Here's the one, two. There you Check, go. Check, swing, pitch, sails low. Watched it sail low. Two and two. Two and two, one out. 
you want to try and take the swings you take in batting practice. You want to emulate that. 2-2 two, two pitch. Look. Trying to take it the other way. Two out. No, he wasn't. He wasn't? He just swung at a wild pitch. A bad pitch. Let's watch it again. It was a ball, ball three. Should have been ball three, not a strike. Yeah, I thought he was trying to poke that the other See, way. Look at his body. It was all out of whack. I mean, it, it, it could had he made contact, it would have gone there. But I don't think that's what he was swinging for. Well, now it's two on, two out. Time called, and Jamal George, number nine hitter, will have a word with Coach Vasquez. Was an assistant over under Mervell Melendez. Charles Bishop, we talked to Coach Vasquez before the game, and I asked him, I said, you know, some of the things that you learned under Coach Melendez, and he just talked about the attention to detail, just the little things, how you prepare, how you practice, how you train. Every little detail. And I remember Coach Melendez when he was at Bama State. He didn't miss a thing. And uh, he yeah. was very successful in the back end of his career in Montgomery. Uh, you, when you take a look at why this program has been so successful, it is the meticulous detail uh, to all the little things. And that is why Alabama State is in the position they are, Charles. They do all the little things. And they're in a position right now to make this a one-run game or an extra base hit to tie it up. George walked his last time up. Three to one, Florida AM. This pitch is inside. Good play Charles, by the catcher you, Hatchie. If you don't pay attention to details, you're not going to be very successful. That's what helps kids to be successful. Detail oriented. Two and oh the count. Adler bullpen quiet for the moment. Two on. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Roger Cater, when you talk about details in baseball, what are what are maybe two of the more finer details when you're talking about going drilling deep into the detail category? Cool. I'll let you think about that for a moment. And here's a little flare in the shallow right center. It's a base hit. A run is in. Runner to third. Ooh. The throw is there. He's oh. out there, and the run counts. It's a one-run game. Wow. What you don't want to have happen, Charles? First and what? Third out where? At third. And he didn't even slide. No, oh, he did not. And you see, Coach Vasquez wanted him to slide. Too late. He gave him the <laughs> information too late. <laughs> or he was saying he was safe. No, he, was, he gave it to a little late. So RBI single by George scores a run, and here come the Hornets. A couple of runs in the fourth inning. We've got our mid-game interviews coming up. Top five, three, two, FAMU, winner advances to the championship game. We'll take a break, top of the lineup, coming up from Atlanta after this on the SWAC Digital Network. Here in Atlanta, Ty Hatchie, Jared Weber, and Michael Bastardo coming up for FAMU. 
It was a 3 nothing game, and here's the, the first pitch. Hold it to the right side, one pitch, and one out as the center fielder Matos hauls it in. All momentum with Alabama State. I'm sure that is pleasing to Coach Vasquez as Charles Bishop is with the Alabama State coach. Yeah, down here with Coach Vasquez. Uh, coach, you guys were able to scratch out a couple runs last inning and still away a, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, I mean, we needed that. We needed that to, to feel like we're back in the game. You know, um, we all would like for things to go as we planned them, but they never do in this game. So, <laughs> you know, we just, once again, we're competing. We're in a battle with a really good team, and – Let's see what we got. You know, we got to continue to compete. You went to the pen early, uh, Sebastian Cleon. He has been able to kind of stabilize things on the mound. Well, once again, it, uh, it, it's a strike uh, game. You got to be able to throw strikes. If they hit you, they hit you. But uh, as long as you continue to throw strikes, you force the issue. Hopefully the defense will make plays. But that's what, I, that's what we're looking for, somebody that continue to throw strikes and pound the zone. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it, Coach. And Charles Bishop, Roger Cato, you were shaking your head. And here's a long fly ball in the deep left field. This ball's well hit, and this ball's going to go. It's a home run. Ty Hanchi. I'm sorry, Jared Weber with the home run. I'm sorry, Jared Weber with the home run. Another home run here by the Rattlers. As Jed Weber with the bases empty, the second home run, but Starno with a home run, Weber with a home run. Four to two. I'm surprised that ball went out. Normally those balls hang up over there. Yeah, left field isn't holding them in today. Yeah, I don't know the wind is playing trick on Charles and I over here. And look, what does it look like he's doing to you, Charles? Yeah, I mean, it's. It's, it's tricky. This is the windiest day we've had. Yeah. Weber hitting a double play, fouled out, and Homer. Boy, FAMU with the long ball. A couple of homers in this game. Here's a shot foul. Well, let's get back to what Coach Vasquez talked about, Roger Kador. You agree with everything he said, pounding the strike zone. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Well, you have to throw strikes. It's a strike game, a game of strike. And... Uh, so the guy hit a home run, but it's a solo shot. Here's another long fly ball. This ball's well hit. High in the air, caught deep left center field by Alabama State's Matos. Just got under that one. Number 14, that's fourth in the conference in hitting. Lord a and M's getting it done. You call, you talk with Coach Jamie Shoup for all the talk of pitching. He says we can hit the baseball, and they're doing that. Looks like we've got a pinch hitter. Joseph Perini. And Joseph Perini batting. Perini. Pierini, 17th at bat, 188 in the postseason. Two out. Four to two. FAMU. Pierini, a long fly ball, deep right field. This ball is hooking foul. Well, FAMU getting their cuts, Roger Kador. They are, but they're not taking big cuts. Rattlers with a home run in this inning, a run in this inning. Jared Weber with the home run. This pitch misses outside. Weber hits seven home runs during the season. And you look at FAMU in this tournament, they have hit six home runs in this tournament. Oh, and they hit, oh, oh, Jared Weber. Weber hit seven during the season. There's a fly ball that's dropped at third. The wind played tricks on it. And the third baseman, Lopez, couldn't haul it in. The other thing is, if we can see that pop up again, 
Why was the first baseman not on first base? Why was it? Well, let's well, let's yeah, look let's at, look at that first. Wow. It's the wind. It's the wind is playing. We don't feel it up here, right off. And now we can't see what's going on at first base. So look, the first baseman is nowhere near first base. Where does he have to go? You see, look, you can't go to sleep because now you had a play had he been at first. See, you got to be at first. You got to play. Now it's too late to get there. You see, you had a play. Where is he going? They got someone at second. Oh, yeah. In other words, he got, maybe got caught too far off first. You could have well, got he, him. He, 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 there is a philosophy. You got to be able to cover. Are you Okay, here's a man from MLB telling me I'm correct in my assessment. <laughs> well, but I know I am. He doesn't have to tell me because I know you have to be somewhere where you cover. Well, Will Brown on base for the third time. Single, double, and a walk. And it's two on. Here comes Coach Vasquez. I'm sure he's making more visits to the mound than he would like. But he's got to figure out a way as his Rattlers have eight hits. The Rattlers four to two. And he's going to try to settle down this pitcher, Cologne. Bullpen getting warmed up here. Coming up in the bottom of the fifth inning, we'll hear from Jamie Shoup. I'm sure he's happy. His team right now, two home runs, 4-2, to two, FAMU. The ninth meeting this season between these two teams on the baseball diamond. Three in this SWAC tournament. And they played the last three games of the regular season. How did that go? Um, Alabama State won that series. Oh, okay. And I was just talking with him. Mean, it was a series in which the seedings were set. One of the games went extra innings. Hader Mota at the plate. He struck out and singled. Here's a base hit. Up the middle, right center field. A run is in. Runner to third. And Alabama State trails 5-2. to two. Hader Mota single. He's two for three with an RBI. They caught the second baseman moving. <laughs> Here Let's comes Coach we, Vasquez again. Let's see if we can catch that second baseman moving. Look at that. Got him moving. Caught him moving. And there it is. Could get back. The second baseman. And we've got a pitching change. It appears. Not appears. This is the second trip. Yep, he takes the baseball. And the third Bama State pitcher coming up here. And an all tournament long. One team score, the other team come back and what? And answers. Right now, all the momentum is with FAMU as they lead 5-2 to two midway through. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after this on the SWAC Digital Network. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference.
Ricardo Rivera on the mound for Alabama State, the third pitcher for the Hornets. He replaced Colon. Replaced starter Hernandez, who went one inning. 5 2 FAMU. This pitch, this is outside. Ball one, first and third, two out. Coach, what's the approach? You got a lefty sidewinder now. <laughs> Same approach. Think up the. Oh. It's a base hit up the middle. Off the bat of Niles, and another run is in, and it's 6 to 2. To be honest with you, Charles, this was the ideal hitter against that kind of pitcher because he's not trying to pull. And I'll bring up the left fielder, Ben Kim. <laughs> yeah, Florida and has got it all working right now. And it's because of lack of ex execution. Pop up that wasn't caught. Kim's going to turn around and bat right handed now. Yeah, switch hitter, just the lefty, Kim 0 for 2. And strike called. Three but, runs on four hits in this inning for FAMU. But I think even four run down is not a lot for, for Alabama State. Because the pitcher, they got him where they want him. He's about tired. And his mechanics going to be a little out of whack even more. So if they're able to just be patient and uh, and take him up the middle. Well, yesterday, the Hornets were down five runs, eight to three, and they got three runs late to fall eight to six. Uh -huh. So they're down four runs here halfway through. I got you. Foul straight back. Ricardo Rivera, during the season, he was 10-0. and 0. He started game two. He was game two started, pitched about two or three innings, didn't go that long. Yeah, this is his second appearance. He went three innings. And there's a fly ball to right. And the inning comes to an end as it's Hauled in in right field by Leprin, and the side is retired. But a big inning. Three runs on four hits, one error, and two stranded. And the Hornets trail 6-2. to two. A Very happy Jamie Shoup will hear from him coming up on the other side of this timeout on the SWAC Digital Network. Alabama State coming up here with Randy Flores, top of the lineup, six to two, halfway through. Here's the pitch inside, ball one. I 
I still think that they can he can be had the pitcher. If they just be patient now, fly balls won't do it. This is deep right field. It's caught in right at the warning track. One away. It's hauled in by Bestardo. Kyler McIntosh, 0 for 2. Found out to first, grounded to short. 6-2, Florida a &M. Here's a fly ball. Play at second, and the win played tricks on it, but staying with it for FAMU is the second baseman, Brown. This McIntosh kid, if he was supposed to be one of their better players, haven't demonstrated it today or yesterday. And he looks like he's limping. You know, I don't know if something is wrong with his foot or ankle. Remember, he was the one they brought in to relieve from shortstop yesterday. And Matos at the plate with Roger Cato quickly two away after that long inning. Not even a 10 pitch inning, two outs. There's a ground ball to third. Throw across, inning is over. Quick of an inning as you can have. Five or six pitches. If you're FAMU. Two fly ball outs, a ground ball out here. As Hader Mota throws out Matos. And we go to the top of the sixth inning. We'll talk with uh, Charles Bishop and head coach Jamie Shew coming up after this timeout here on the SWAC Digital Network. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. Top of the lineup for Florida A&M. Jackson, a shot to second, good play. Climbing the ladder is Flores, one out. Good play there, Roger Kador. Very good play. He showed some good hop. Ty Hanchi at the plate. I'm sure Jamie Shoup loves the approach, loves the aggressiveness, and loves the scoreboard here, Charles Bishop. Yeah, down here with Coach Shoup. Uh, Coach, you said bats are the reason you're in the position you are. Six runs, nine hits through six innings. Yeah, I'm pleased with the offense so far. There's a lot of baseball left, and again, you got if you want to be the champion, you got to beat the champion. So those guys are the champions. They got champion ped pedigree, and this ball game's a long way from being over. We just got to do what we didn't do the first game. That's settle down, take care of business with a four-run lead with four uh, four innings left. How about the innings your starter, Trey Simmons, is giving you? So far, so good. Trey has thrown, thrown really, really well. So I just hope he continues. His whole st his stuff is good. His whole issue has always been command. I mean, uh, and he's, he's shown some command today. So very pleased with him. But, again, a lot of baseball left. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. And it, Coach Shoup said it, Coach Kador. A lot of baseball left. We've seen these games get decided in the last <laughs> inning or two. So we're not there yet. Not there yet. Going to the count. There's a fly ball left side. So we, we know what Florida A&M is doing. Let's look at the other side, Alabama State. What's not happening? They're not taking good quality cuts. I mean, you know, when you're popping the ball up and, you know, weak cuts at that, you know what I'm saying? 
Here's see, a backhand see. that's dropped and left. See, poor, poor outfield play. Why would he see that far back on the left hand hitter? And then, you know, that ball is up there long enough to catch. That's Jack Hay and left. Try to backhand it, could not. And here comes Coach Vasquez. Let me tell you something, man. And the trainer's coming out as well. I wonder if it's something. Uh, I'm looking at the way he's holding his arm. His left arm. You always wonder. Let's see. It's Ricardo Rivera being looked at here. And they're taking a look at. Look at him on the mound. Yeah, it's his arm. It's something with the arm. There it is. And I think there's going to be a pitching change coming yeah. up as well. It's something. He's probably, you know, pitching. He's a freshman. He pitched on. He pitched Thursday. And then to, you're asking him to throw that. You see, look how he's holding his arm. It's got something to do with soreness. I've seen enough of them so I could tell. And I've been there. So we'll take a timeout here. We'll be right back after this. The fourth Bama State pitcher coming up. We'll tell you about it after this here on the SWAC Digital Network. Austin King on the mound for Alabama State. King, 14 appearances during the regular season. This pitch strike called. Six to two. Amu with the lead. One on, one out. There's a long fly ball in the deep left field. This ball's well hit, and this ball is off the wall. God. Just missed it. Runner being waved around. Brett Richardson waves him around. He'll score. And the Rattlers lead 7-2. to two. Oh, That ball was well hit. We got two issues here. Let's show. We'll cover them both here, Charles. Weber homered his last time up. Almost missed this one, Roger Kador. Oh, yeah. He hit that one pretty good. Okay, Hayes not making any hay out there. Get back. You got a chance to get back. You dare. You dare. You failed the wall. Now you got it. And he got crossed up the ball. Okay, so he missed it. But look. Look what happened here. He's got a chance if he makes a good throw to the shortstop. The shortstop, if he makes a good, we still got a chance to get the runner at home plate. So it was two boo-boos that we didn't execute. 
And so consequently, the run was given up. Stardo pops it up on the infield. It's going to be a bucket catch at first. <laughs> a bucket catch? Bucket catch. It's like holding out a bucket. Corey King with the catch. We can look at that. Can we say it was a Willie Mays basket catch? Oh, I was about to say, oh, Willie catch. Mays catch. <laughs> uh, That's what I meant. I meant a basket uh, catch. I said bucket catch. I meant bucket. basket catch. We're going to work with you, Charles. No problem. <laughs> we understand. You're a basketball man <laughs> by trade. Two out. Well, fam, you 11 hits. This pitch strike called. Irini at the plate for the Rattlers. You see, sometimes a bat for you sacrifice defense for a bat, usually come back and haunt you. It doesn't always work out right. And he is in there because of his bat. Now that's a ball you got to catch. Count is one to one to Pierini. Single this first time up is the second at bat. This is a fly ball. Left Look side. Look at third baseman letting him catch it again. Look at the and third baseman. And this is a catch in foul territory. Boy, the wind is playing tricks on the baseball. Heck of a catch by George. Let's watch this here before we go to break. Why would the third baseman do it two times in a row? He tosses the mask. Look at this. And he collides with his mask again. But it's the third baseman's ball. Holds it up from the umpire. Side is retired. But the FAMU Rattlers add a run here. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. First of two here in Atlanta. Seven to two. Rattlers, Hay, Leprin, and King after this on the SWAC Digital Network. Back here in Atlanta, Charles Edmond with the Hall of Famer Roger Cador, Charles Bishop on the field, and uh, Coach Cador. So far, the Rattlers in this ninth chapter getting it done, but a lot of baseball left to be played. Oh, a lot of balls left to be played. I tell you, Alabama State is keep making it more difficult for itself with some poor defensive execution. You know, but this is why Hayes in the lineup because of his bat. Now, you got to do more than singers to be able to make up for the miscue out there. Well, Jack Hay, his third hit, he's three for three. He's one of the bright spots for the Hornets. Bottom of the sixth inning, LePrand at the plate. Lead off is on for the Hornets. Well, we've seen these ebbs and flows, Charles Bishop, and the wild swings here in this ninth chapter of the year between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, you, we, we know it's just so much more baseball to be played, just like Coach Shoup said. 6-4-3. Three, a double play. You know what's so disappointing as a, for Coach Vasquez? Here's a guy who's obviously, LaPree has got the possibility of hitting the ball good. On the very first pitch, he took a lazy swing. If we could show that. You never want your power hitter. To ease a cleanup hitter. Why would you take that kind of swing on the very first pitch? And I'm hoping we have the replay. We may not have it, but. All right, here we go. Okay, watch the swing. This is the first. You got a leadoff hitter. Watch the swing. Look, you can't do that on the first swing. 
Here's a long fly ball. This ball's well hit in the corner, and this ball is foul. Well, that was well hit. Corey King took it for a ride. So paying attention to detail is what I do, and this is why I wanted to highlight it because that's a two-strike swing that is acceptable, but never with your leadoff hitter when you're behind in the count. That's never acceptable to take that kind of swing. There's a fly ball right side. Is there a play? No. Just landed beyond the rail. We've seen two plays in which third baseman and first baseman leaned over the rail to make a catch in foul territory. That one just beyond the rail. And kids have the confidence because of the padding. You know, the walls is padded, so they feel they can go at it pretty hard. And you know it's mandatory now. Every ballpark will have to have padding which is good for the kids, the young people playing the game. Seven to two. It's been all FAMU. Bama State got a couple of runs in the fifth inning. But FAMU playing a long ball, two home runs hit. Pitches inside and just when to get the leadoff man on Roger Kador, double play. Yeah, but it was uh... – you know, you, if you're going to play championship baseball, you're going to have to do a little better to swing than what LaPree gave him. There's See a base hit slapped up the middle off the bat of Corey King. He's two for three. They had a chance to do a lot of stuff if, if that one bad swing. Like they said, one bad apple can spoil a whole bunch. Yeah. That bad swing. So, But it's not over with. No, no, it's not. I mean, Alabama State in the first meeting in this tournament won nine to eight, scoring five runs in the ninth. So this one far from over. Lopez, the plate, a ground ball foul outside of third. Coming up next, Santoria Black. Roger Cador, Charles Bishop will have the call of Bethune Cookman Grambling coming up. Centurio is going to be in the in the saddle. <laughs> huh? And if he's got some good stories to tell me. If that game is any indication of what we've got here, that should be a fun game. It will because he's got good stories. The ones you don't want to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a pitch uh, off speed swing and a miss. But again, you see the kind of swing he gave you? That's the kind of swing you take with two strikes. It's acceptable with two strikes not with less than two strikes. You couldn't have done anything with that pitch. Look at that, now that's up the middle. What a good play. Oh, second baseman bobbled it. Bobbled behind second. But that's okay. The ball is in. You know, there's still life. One swing of the bat, you can make a difference. I was hitting the hole. Oh, I'm sorry. It's been tough to get him out. Well, he had a chance to flip to the shortstop to Niles. I thought that's what he, the only play he had. Well, Trenton Jamison at the plate with two on. Over swinging back. again. And he went the last time he struck out, he went in that little room. You see, there's a room, a dark room he went in. You, you recognize that dark room over there? The batting cage? In the, in the dugout. Oh. He went and locked himself in there, and he was against the wall. I hope the wall is okay. It's the pitch strike called. Coach, let me ask, what, on those type swings, do you think guys are pressing a little bit? Well, want to do more than the pitchers are letting you do. You know, you can't overswing. Look at all the hits they've gotten, basic swings. They need base runners. The 0-2. Hopper to Niles to throw to second, and that'll do it. So we played six, two stranded for the Hornets. In an elimination game for the Florida a &M Rattlers. They lost the second game to Bama State. So this is their third elimination game. They beat Prairie View. They beat Bama State yesterday, and they're leading here today, 7-2. to We'll take a break. Top seven coming up on the SWAC Digital Network.
Here in Atlanta, Will Brown will lead it off. First pitch strike call. Will Brown two for two with a walk. Adam Hatermana and Jalen Niles, six, seven, and eight to follow. And the count is one and one again. Loser of this game is eliminated. The winner advances to the championship game tomorrow. Here is a diving stab at third. Good play. One out. Terrific play by Lopez at third. Roger Cador, take it away here. Yeah. He saved a, a double. He did save a double. And he did quick reaction. It's one of those plays that do or die. You can't do a whole lot other than dive. And he took his time, make a good throw to first. I tell you, we've seen some really good defensive plays from teams in this uh, in the tournament. Would you agree? I agree. I mean, all over the lot, whether it's in the outfield or the infield, especially yeah. it's short and third, Charles Bishop. Yeah. We've seen a bunch of web gems here. Yeah, you know, Coach Hernandez was talking about that the other day, uh, especially a player like Jalen Niles over there at FAMU. He's a, been one of the more slick field and shortstops that we've seen here in this tournament. I tell you, he's got put himself way up the ladder in terms of being a, one in the 50 players. And a ground ball to third, and the throw across is there and quickly two away. Charles has got inside scoop, though. I'm on the committee. I don't have inside scoop. <laughs> How about that, Charles? Hey, I, I hang with the right people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Edmund, though. Uh, oh. He's got inside scoop. I hang with the right people, though, Coach Kador. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Jalen Niles fly to first. His sack fly made it 3 nothing, And his RBI single made it 6-2. to two. So he has two runs batted in. Seven runs, 11 hits. They've out hit the Hornets 11-7 to seven and lead 7-2. to two. See what happened when young pitchers tried to overthrow. Hey, hey, Charles. You had asked yesterday about the mound, from the pitching mound. This pitcher is landing in a, a little different spot, and he was having a problem Top or foul. With, his, with his lane foot. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that I've kind of noticed. Some of the relief pitchers, they're, they're trying to get, you know, their, 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 uh, their stride right as, right as they come in. Yeah. Yeah. So you're almost forced to lane – where the existing thing is, you see. There's the 2 1. Make your hay out there. And it's going to be caught in left, and the side is retired as Hay hauls it in. And speaking of hay, Alabama State trying to make some hay here. Time's running out, bottom of the seventh inning. They're down 7 to 2. We'll take a break. 9 1 and 2. George Flores and McIntosh coming up on the SWAC Digital Network. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Pretty good crowds here in Atlanta. The weather has been spectacular. A little on the windy side today, but the turnout, I've been reading the comments on social media. A lot of folks pleased with the tournament here in Atlanta. You got alumni from all schools here in this beautiful city. 
And uh, the crowd's picking up here as we get into the mid part of the day. Past the mid part of the game here. And Charles Bishop for Alabama State. Uh, it's getting, as they say, it's getting a little tight with the bottom of the lineup coming up with George and then Flores and McIntosh. Yeah, you can hear a couple of FAMU fans. They're starting to count outs now. So uh, it is getting a little bit late here. Well, the you're talking, we, we're getting into where you got the outs. You can start counting the outs. We're in the seventh inning. So you're looking at nine outs for, uh, for, for, for FAMU. You can count them. You can literally smell them. It's the ninth time these two teams have met this season, the third time in this postseason. Alabama State, the number one seed in the East. They're on the ropes. One and two. Off speed, just missed, two and two. One, two, the count. You've got three teams from the SWAC East, one from the West still remaining. This pitch just missed, and we will have a representative from the East in the championship. <laughs> Grambling, the lone team from the West, still alive, and they'll take on Bethune-Cookman coming up next. Full count. Leadoff is on for the Hornets. There are some faithfuls out there who would say, for the first time, there'll be a team like Bethune-Cookman or FAMU who will win the championship, the Swag Championship. There are some faithfuls out there saying that. But there's a lot, a lot of baseball left to be played in this game and, of course, tomorrow. And Randy Flores at the plate. Flores have hit the ball good all tournament. I really like him a lot. And Flores is 0 for 3. The MU, the number three seed in the East. Throw the first. That's not, should not be happening, Mr. Simmons. Your job is to get the hitter. That run means nothing. So if he steals second and steals third, it doesn't matter. It's no. a pitch up and in. No, you got to get the hitters. And you don't want the pitcher losing his focus, concentration. That first, the runner's job is to distract him. And you shouldn't play into his hand. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This is on the outside corner, 2-1. That's why you don't want to screw around with him. Alabama State had the leadoff man on in the sixth inning and a double play. The MU turned a 6-4-3 double play to take the steam out of that sixth inning. They have the leadoff man on again here in the seventh. Four innings in a row, the leadoff man has been on. Make it five. Make it six. Six innings in a row, the leadoff has been on. There's a ground ball foul. So let's go back here. After a one, two, three inning for Bama State in the first, Hay led off the second with a single. George led off the third with a walk. Hay led off the fourth with a single. Jamal George led off with an RBI. Then in the sixth inning, Hay led off with a single. And now George... Leads off with a walk. So six straight innings, the leadoff has been on. Roger Kador is a fly ball. It's going to land out of play. Right there. Charles Bishop was right sitting right there. Yeah. I, need, I need him a glove. Uh, <laughs> use your cap. <laughs> let's take a look at it here. And Charles Bishop. Uh, oh, oh duh. He wanted no parts of that, folks. <laughs> and from what I've been told, that it really hurts. E bleachers. <laughs> Here's a ground ball to second. Throw the short low and offline. And the runner to third. It's going to be an E4. And the runner to second, second and third for Alabama State. Boy, let's do this play again. This is a classic case where you got and you need outs. Remember, we were saying leave the pitcher. It's a classic case. You need outs. So let's see here. Too difficult to have to throw the second. Take the out at first because you're dealing with outs late in the game. A difficult play. Almost get, get your shortstop hurt. 
And there was nobody backing up at third. So well, it was easy, too quick. It was too quick of a play to back up. An easy take at third. And now it looks like the left fielder for oh, my goodness. is shaking up as well. And he's been over here. Ben Kim. I mean, how did he get hurt? Let's take a look at it here. Maybe a cramp. Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at the replay. Yeah, the obvious play it's was first. the first. Yeah. No, there's no need to. All you need is outs. That runner means nothing. That's it. Yeah. yeah it's got to be a cramp. Again, stretched out here. Well, just like that, Charles Bishop, Alabama State, trying to stir up the pot here in the seventh inning. And if you allow it, the defense is aiding them in their situation. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been talking about it all game. This is this one's going to go nine innings. I mean, uh, you take a look at the games they played already, and it is always a thriller in the last three innings. Well, Bama State was down four runs late against this team the first go around, and got five in the ninth and one nine to eight. Here they're down five runs with second and third. What's ironic, they're taking him water. He had to have water before he gets out there. You know, you got to drink plenty of water in this, this condition. It's been relatively comfortable, some fans in the sun yeah. with the fans, but. It's comfortable. Yeah, it's really, really comfortable here on this Memorial Day weekend. All you young athletes out there, drink plenty of water. Don't drink your power in and gator in and all that other stuff. Water is the best thing for the body during the athletic competition. Ben Kim is okay as he got stretched out in some, some water. But on the field, Alabama State hanging tough here as Kyler McIntosh stands in, second and third, a base hit here. And put Alabama State right back in it. McIntosh grounded to short, fouled out, flied out. Pitch outside, ball one. The bullpen busy in earnest for the first time for Florida a &M. You're giving him a lot of credit. Both of them been pop up in my opinion. The one near the, uh, you know, McIntosh is just taking poor at bats. This pitch is outside. Jamie Shoup on the top step of the dugout. Well, I figured the, the mechanics will catch up with this pitcher. If you don't have solid mechanics, it's hard to to keep. Here's a 2-0, oh, low and inside. 3-0. and oh. Jamie Shu puts the pin on his collar. He may be ready to go out. I don't think he's going to stay alone, as long with him as he did yes, pitcher yesterday. This pitch strike call on the inside corner. And McIntosh did not like that call from home plate umpire let's, Brian Clark. That's a, let's see what McIntosh does here. You know, he may be, if it's close, he'll swing. Here's the 2 1, and well, that's the ball four. It was a 3 1 pitch. So he's the bases are loaded. About, he's angry. What is he angry about? He's walking. And here comes <laughs> Coach Jamie Shoup. And he's going to make a change. I, I really don't understand young people. He, he's walking, he's helping the team, and he's angry. Shouldn't be angry. Two walks in an air. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Here comes Alabama State with the meat of the lineup coming up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Five-run lead for the Rattlers. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Time out on the SWAC Digital Network. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future. 
all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. You are looking at their second best closer and Harrison at the plate. Grant Harrison with three saves. They've got Moray, their number one save guy who pitched yesterday. He's pitched every game in this tournament. Bases are loaded, nobody out. This pitch is inside to Matos, who's 0 for 3. He's grounded to third twice and fly to left. And the count is 2 and 0. Rattlers with a five run lead. It's a strike call on the outside corner, 2 and 1. Two and one the count. Bases are loaded. Two walks and an air in this inning. Three and one. Boy, this ain't good. Three and one the count. I think he did the same thing when he came in the other day. He had problems finding the strike zone. Harrison at the belt. Bases loaded, nobody out. Well, right down the middle. Pitch. Count is full. Three and two. You got Jack Hay, who's three for three, coming up. Well, he's going to have to make some hay today. The old-fashioned hay. Time called. The catcher, Hanchi, going out to have a word with Harrison. What could that little short conversation be about, Roger Kador? Uh, I don't know. I can't. 3-2. Well, maybe concentrate just try to make a good pitch. I think they wanted to make sure they were all, all together on what type of pitch oh, they were about to throw. Okay. Trying to get on the same page. Here we go. Three and two. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Good. Runners in. Seven to three. Three walks in this inning. Now, he could really make it interesting. Jack Hay, the left fielder at the plate. The freshman hit 378 during the year. 10 home runs. And with one swing of the bat, he can tie this game. Which is high, ball one. Matos at first, McIntosh at second, Flores at third. George just scored on the bases loaded walk. Seven to three, Florida a and &M. This pitch strike called, off speed, one and one. Nobody out in this inning, Roger Kador. Yeah, well, it won't mean a thing unless Jack Hay make Hay. Here's the 1-1 one, one inside. 2-1-1. Two and one. Rattler's bullpen. Very active. 2-1 the count. Nobody out. A run is in. 
This pitch strike call on the inside corner. Count is even. Two and two. Bottom of the seventh inning. Loser is eliminated. The winner advances to the championship game. You're making this so dramatic. The loser eliminated. Here's the 2-2. Two -two, a fly ball. Shallow right. It's caught in right. Runner tags. Here comes the throw home. It is a safe. Catcher dropped the ball. Run is in. Why is the guy still on first base? He is safe at home. Catcher for FAMU dropped the ball. Ty Hanchi. That's a really good throw. Really good throw right there. He can't block the plate. He's blocking the plate. You can't be in the base. You see in the line that Charles, you can't block it without the ball. And the ball was dropped as well. So run is in. It's seven to four. The first out of the inning. You see, I'm big. The run on first should have been on second. All of that, once you see that run is being challenged at home, you got to force them to do something. You're going to make it easy. And Ryder should have took off for second. Here's a oh. ball to third. Could be two over to second for one. Over to first. Close is out of double play. That's why he should have gone to second. Five, four, three. Second double play turn. What a turn at second. What a turn. Yes, he turned it big league. And he slid. But there should have never been a double play attempt. Had to run and left first and go into second on the throw to home. Well, Coach Vasquez does not challenge that. Cannot. It's no challenge. Oh, bang, bang, play. Just got him. Side is retired, but... The Hornets get a couple here in the seventh, seven to four. The AMU with the lead will take a break right here. Eight, nine, and one coming up here on the SWAC Digital Network. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Ben Kim will lead it off, 9-1-2 and two here in the eighth. This pitch misses. Charles Bishop, down to you. A couple of observations. You talked about FAMU starting pitching. Yeah, I mean, for all the talk that we've had about FAMU's hitting, it's the starting pitching that has really caught my eye. You take a look, Dallas T, seven innings, no earned runs. Uh, Herner beat seven innings. Uh, Caleb Granger, six innings. The big one, I think, yesterday to get them to today, Raylan Wagner, he went eight and a third. So uh, their starting pitching has really held up. And six innings today by the starter Simmons, two runs on eight hits. So they have gotten the pitching and the hitting. But it's not over with yet. Here's a ground ball foul down the right side. I tell you, Alabama State is making it difficult by not executing the little things that's never going to show up in the press in the box schools. But you have to do them if you're going to win. And they would have stayed out of that double play. There's the pitch strike called. Now this game belongs to Austin King for the Hornets, trying to keep it close. Up 
picked up, foul and out of play. Well, you wouldn't expect anything less from these two teams, Roger Cador. It's been a marathon. It's been a roller coaster. It's been up and down. It's been seesaw. And we got another couple of innings left here. And we've stayed to script. <laughs> uh? You wouldn't expect anything less between these two teams <laughs> in the ninth chapter. The ninth chapter. The ninth chapter between How these two How many chapters teams. do they have in the book? Uh, well, this, this is the final chapter. Oh, okay. And the question is, who will have the pen in their hand to, to close the book out is the question. Yeah. The uh, count is full three and two. That's right. Here's the pitch. Shot in the right, and Adam play perfectly caught in right yeah, by whoever, left red. Whoever have the pin in the hand will write the final chapter. Yep. You just get that sense, Charles Bishop. You even have parents pacing underneath the stadium. Yeah, I mean, you could really cut the tension with a knife here, but, I mean, it's just very interesting. You got parents, you got fans all pacing in the breeze way back here. It means a lot. Means a lot to the parents. Pitch strike call. Roger Cador, you from for a, a million years you dealt with parents. You you know how it is for you in the dugout and the players, but for the and the fans, the alumni, the boosters, the supporters. But what about the parents? I mean, in a game like this. It's just as difficult for them because it's that little Johnny and little Billy that they want to enjoy success. You got me? And uh so they feel the pressure too, and they hurt when they, when their kid don't do what they want them to do, you know, or expect to do. But it is what it is. There's gonna be half of the parents in this in this stadium gonna be happy, and half is gonna be what disappointed. Half Sad. of the girlfriends are gonna be happy. Half of them gonna be disappointed. Here's the one two fouled off to the right side. But one thing I have learned, and I'll take. One of the things coming out of this tournament that I'll take, FAMU and Alabama State are, are really the next big baseball rivalry. There's no question about that. Here's the one, two. High chopper, could play a third off the back foot. The throw is there. What a good play. And he's out at first. Ooh, Lopez is really doing it at third. Let's look at this, Roger Cade, or the operation here. Over the shoulder. The present of mind to make a good throw over there. Yeah. We've had some really good play baseball. Oh, shades oh. of Mike Schmidt out there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh that's a blast from the past. Out of by Aaron Bishop. Arenado. <laughs> uh, pitches inside. Aurelio Rodriguez may be better. Hey, Rod. No, Aurelio. Aurelio. He used to play with Detroit. Couldn't hit but had one in the greatest arm. A Mexican player. Here's the pitch. You should remember him, Charles. Uh, uh, vaguely. Okay. Vaguely. You're, you're, you're throwing a lot of wisdom at me. A lot, of, a lot of names from back in the day. Back in the day, huh? Two and all the count. This is high. But we have seen some gems on the infield for sure. Yeah. Three and all the count. Two out in this inning. Seven to four. Rattlers with the lead. They've out hit the Hornets 11 to eight. One air committed on each side. And we've got a two out walk to Hanshi. He's on base for the third time. Hit by a pitch single and walk. So Jared Weber, he's homered, doubled, fouled out, and hit into a double play. Weber just missed his second home run in his last at bat. Wind blowing right to left. Pitch is low. Well, it's two out, Roger Kador. How do you pitch to a guy that's been dangerous at the plate? He, <laughs> he almost had a second home run. He has homered. Well, he's got to pitch him away. This is more imperative now that he does it because of the wind. And uh, so pitch him away, so try to let him pull. Is this why you've got a visit here on the mound, trying to see how to deal with this guy? Well, the guy's throwing balls right now. You want him to throw strikes. 
Seven to four. This is game one of two games. A meeting on the mound. And a close game. Well, Charles Bishop, we wouldn't expect anything less for a FAMU Bama State game. We knew it was going to be seesaw. Not surprised, are we? Not surprised whatsoever. I tell you what, I was just thinking, <laughs> Coach Eddie Robinson and Willie Simmons, they're going to have a hard act to follow. This is definitely a rivalry. <laughs> Here's a foul straight back. Here's a swing, he went around. Count is one and two. Swing and a miss. And the side is retired. Oh, the Alabama State Hornets hanging around. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, seven to four. The winner moves to the championship game. The losers eliminated, bottom of the eighth. Coming up after this on the SWAC Digital Network. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, everything we are past present and future all in one because the best way to honor our history is to make history Chevrolet honor to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference I cannot remember the last time we've had two SWAC tournament games on Saturday. I remember, of course, we've had none. We've had one. When was the last time we've had two? And there's a base hit slapped in the left field. And Corey King leading it off. He's three for four, three straight singles. Well, it, it was off. a good, easy, basic swing now, Charles. Let's see what happens here. You got your boy Lopez. Lopez has been on base three times. A walk and two singles. His RBI single made it three to one. Here's the first pitch misses outside. Lopez has made two beautiful defensive plays over there at third base, which saved runs. Well, last year you had Bama State, Bethune-Cookman, and Southern FAMU last year. So it's as recent as last year, the last time you had a couple of games. Doesn't happen very often. 2-0 the count. The tying run is in the on-deck circle. Fastball is high. 3-0. Lead off is on, Corey King. 
Bottom of the lineup for Bama State. Two on. This is the easiest way to let them catch up by start walking people. Force them to swing the bat. I still think the park is pay, playing relatively big. You do have win, but it's not easy to hit a ball out of here. We're gonna get a pinch hitter here for Jamison, the DH. Here comes Jamie Shoup. We got a pitching change, so we got a pinch hitter and a change on the mound. We'll break it all down for you. Coming up after this, tying run at the plate. Seven to four. FAMU. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. A lot's unpacked here on the SWAC Digital Network. Hydration dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gatorlite, now available in powder and Gatorlite Zero Sugar. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you, and Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you could get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Energetic crowd here, a lot of energy in the stadium all week long, including right here and right now. Seven to four, Zach Murray on the mound. And Coach Hugh calls him everyday Murray, especially in this case, he's pitched every day in the tournament. This is his fifth appearance in the tournament. He's pitched every game, he's only pitched four innings, four hits, struck out four. And Charles Bishop, a big at bat here. Talk about the guy at the plate for Alabama State. He's had a big part in the success for the Hornets. He no needs to be thinking the, I'm sorry, Charles. Go no ahead, Charles Bishop. No doubt about it. Jaden Sloan, he had the game winning hit in the first matchup between Bama State and FAMU. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. He was trying to tie it up right there. Well, that's not his strength. You see, because he was pulling off with Moray, he's gonna have to take him the other way. And he's got the big hole to shoot for to right field. There's the 0-1. Strike called on the inside corner, 0-2. Tying run at the plate. And a single and a walk. Sloan. Second at bat, he pops this up, mile high, left center, who wants it? It's gonna be caught in center. This is amazing. Left field shortstop couldn't get there. Ty Jackson hauled it in. Roger Cater, whose ball should that have been? The one that, the only, I mean, the center fielder was the only one that obviously could catch it. 
And that was left, solid left center. No, but the center fielder was okay. Well, that went, that's the win. That's a heck of a catch. You know, bad swing, though. Oh. He got out of that swing what he put into it, nothing. Here's a shot up the middle and a toss to short. And he's got a fielder's choice here. And runners on at first and third. Now they're four out to where you really got to be thinking, you know, the runner, that run means nothing. At third base, we got to get it out. The run at first base means nothing. We got to get it out. And it comes down to Flores. Well, it was two on none out, two on two out. Bama State trying to get a run here, or two. Flores 0 for 3. <laughs> Fly to center. Fly to right, grounded out. And reached on an error. You fool around and bark, bitch, you're doing what you just did. Don't do that. <laughs> Pitch from Moray, strike call. <laughs> Charles Bishop, they call him Everyday Moray. That's what Coach Shoup said before the game. No doubt about it, Everyday Moray. I <laughs> trust his pitcher here to come in and get the job done. There's a shot in the shallow center, and the side is retired. A big Three opportunity for Florida A&M. Defensively for Alabama State, two on, none out, but the tying run coming out. Player that won the game a couple of days ago and they come up empty. We go to the ninth inning. Rattlers with a three run lead. We'll come right back to Atlanta. Top nine here on the SWAC Digital Network. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Welcome back. The ninth meeting between these two teams. And during the regular year, Alabama State won five out of six. Does it matter now? Nope, it does not. Winner of this game goes to the championship. Start at the plate and a base hit up the middle. We're underway. Bastardo has done well this series. Stardo, two run home run. How big was that? The homer, the home run ball's the difference. Weber with a homer. Stardo with a two run home run. Stardo, two for five. Homer, single, fly to third, left, and back to the pitcher. Time called, and Coach Vasquez in the seventh season. 
Looks like he'll pay a visit, get his bullpen busy. It's a three-run game. Perini at the plate. His third at bat coming up. And a pitching change coming up. We'll talk about it when we come back on the SWAC Digital Network. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. You join the HBCU family. You become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Luis Rodriguez, their best closer with six saves on the mound for Bama State. And we've got a wild pitch. Overthrowing. So you, can, you can't strike him out on the first pitch. <laughs> and that's the hardest thing sometimes to make young people understand. You got me? You want to throw, get ahead. But one pitch, can't strike him out on the first pitch. Perini, third at bat, single, fly to third, took the place of Long, the DH. Pitch strike called. Or Charles Bishop fans on the edge of their seat for every pitch, whether you're a Rattler fan or a Hornet fan. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, uh, this is fun just to be up in the stands with the crowd. I, I tell you what, they are hanging on every pitch. Are you hanging with them? <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Charles Bishop isn't going anywhere. I'll have post-game reaction for the winners. Too close to call right now. Count is one and one. There's a base hit in the right center field. A starter around third. Look at field Perini. Scorer. Perini to second, and he's in there. And the Rattlers improve their lead. It's eight to four. Perini is third at bat at the DH. He's two for three. Will Brown at the plate. Brown single, doubled, and walked. Fam, you have made Alabama State pay for lack of execution. You know. It's a fastball high. 13th hit 
for the Rattlers. This is what I love about the game of baseball, sports in particular. You got to play the game to determine who is going to win. Game, this stuff on, that's on paper has very little value sometimes. Or on social media. Oh, well, even less. <laughs> but I know one place has got value. On the field. <laughs> and another one. Your favorite word. <laughs> oh, the one one. We won't go there. This pitch is <laughs> inside two and one. Two and one the count. Yeah, no, no. It's really determined on the field, Charles. And, uh, and you find out because you have the ability to look at a lot of different social media platforms. So you have much more information than I do about what they're saying. You got me? But it doesn't matter, and it's good that you read it because you can share it sometime with the public, you know? Here's the 2-2, a ground ball. It's That's a fair a ball. Play. Throw and the tag, good and he is out there. Oh. Good play all the way around at third and at first. Man, we've seen some good plays from Lopez at third. Here's another oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. This Look at is that. really good play. This is really – first baseman had the present of mind, too. That's terrific. Well, we're getting our money's worth. Would you agree? Absolutely. And they're in for the play at the plate. Yeah. I saw something. Uh, hold up. What's going on now? Adam Hader Moda. Oh, okay. The talking. Yeah, Jamie Shoup's going to have a word with him about this situation. I saw something last night, I guess. And I don't know if you and I were doing the game. Gremlin, it was a situation they had first and third with one out. And the, the third baseman played back and they were behind. It was a situation he should have been up to try and kill a runner at home. And he played back. So you see a little bit of everything in this game. The fastball strike called. I got to tell you, know, I'm one of those guys I give credit where it's due. This umpire has really been consistent. They can say what they want. He has been, in the two games behind the plate, he's done the same thing, he's been consistent. This game almost a carbon copy of the first meeting here in the tournament. You think so? Yeah, it was eight to four, and Bama State <laughs> comes back with five. It's eight to four again. Yeah, but it's been a different eight to four. <laughs> it was the, the, the eight to four has been different. Yeah. Alabama State is going to have more of an issue coming back today than it did yesterday. You, you, you look at look at look at the dugout. It doesn't have it doesn't have the life in it. You got me. Here's the one two. Just pokes it, oh. foul. A little dribbler down the left side. Give Perini some credit, though. He had made his way beyond the baseball. See, he was going on contact. And look at here, there it is, he did it right. Even though he hesitated, but he did it right. He was coming on contact. You young guys, when they say contact, soon the ball is made. No matter what happens, you're doing what the coach asks you to do. Go in contact. And remember that phrase, a scared man can't gamble and the jealous man can't leave home. Well, we might have a play at home we here. We will, we will. It's caught and right. Perini ain't coming. And a heck of a throw that got away, but a great play by the pitcher backing it up. This is why pitchers got to back up, young people. That's a drill that is worked on quite often. We all do it. Let's there take it a is. look at it, Roger Kador. <laughs> oh, he made a good throw. A little high. See, I don't like the third base. We get in position to third, he might have a play. Now it's two out. The check swing and Niles did not go around, according to first base umpire Randall Montgomery. Jalen Niles. This run could be big. Yeah. It puts away the grand slam. 
He has two RBIs, a sack fly, and a single. Niles with two hopper to second. The throw across, and we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Haven't we been here before? Eight to four, bottom of the ninth inning. Well, let's see if this means something. <laughs> you sound like Satchel Page. Eight to four. Bama State was in this position. The first go round between these two teams. They got five and one at nine to eight. What will Saturday bring? We'll find out on the other side of this timeout. The winner goes to the championship game. The loser's eliminated. We'll be back on the SWAC Digital Network. Bottom of the ninth inning. The ninth, how about the number nine? Ninth meeting between these two teams. Bottom of the ninth inning. And it's going to take nine runs to win this game Why for Bama State. Why is he swinging at the first pitch? Why is he doing that? You're down four runs. You got it. What you try to do? Get on base. McIntosh at the plate. Two, three, and four coming up for the Hornets. The winner. Somebody should have been telling, don't swing at that first pitch. There's a ground ball foul. 0-2. Zach Moray, call him everyday Moray. He's pitched every day in this tournament, every game in this tournament for FAMU. Well, he's going to have to pitch again tomorrow if they win. Yeah, yep. He'll be ready tomorrow for sure if they get to that point. But three big outs to get. This pitch misses outside. For Florida a and m they beat Texas Southern 9-1. to Lost to Bama State 9-8 to after leading 8-4. to And they're in the same position again. Swing and a miss. One out. Let me see if number three is going to get angry. <laughs> Ian Matos 0 for 3 with a walk He stuck the bat in, he's okay So after losing the second game FAMU beats Prairie View 1 to nothing Beats Bama State 8 to 6 And they're leading 8 to 4 here Pitch misses outside For Alabama State They got off to a great start Beating Prairie View 11 to 1 And FAMU 9 to 8 they lost eight to six yesterday, losing here. Grambling, Bethune Cookman coming up next. That ought to be a burn, bone, bone burner. Centorio Black will have the call, along with Roger Cador, the Hall of Famer, and Charles Bishop. His pitch strike called. For Moray. His fifth appearance in this tournament. He's pitched every game. Base hit into left field. Alabama State not going quietly. Matos a single. He's been on base twice. And now you've got Jack Hay, who's three for four with an RBI via sack fly. A 
Providence State needs a couple more base runners. Pitch to Hay. Strike call. Florida A&M has turned two double plays. A 5-4-3 off the bat of Leopard. Actually, Leopard's hitting the two double plays. There's a fly ball down the left side. It's going to land out of play. The ninth meeting between these two teams. Six during the regular season in which Bama State won five out of six. Oh, really? Yep. Third meeting here in the tournament. <laughs> Record don't mean a thing, huh? That's why you got to get it done in the postseason. Rattlers two outs away. Now off to the right side. FAMU. Look at the Rattlers. Just griming, battling here. From the loser's bracket. Here's a foul. Well, Charles Bishop so much has to go right to win this thing or get to the championship from the loser's bracket. It, it has happened. Teams have won it from the loser's bracket. So much has to happen. So much has to go your way. And right now, FAMU has those things going. So much has to go your way, and you have to get some timely hits, and FAMU has done it today. Trouble. This could be two. Niles over the short. 6-4, and a fielder's choice. And the Rattlers are one out. Away. I've got to figure five time over the I won it, but by five times coming out of the losers bracket. Well, of course, a win here will put them in the championship game. But coming from the losers bracket, what's the mindset? You know, coming Listen from to that. the FAMU fans, they feel it. Yeah, they feel it right now. For sure, they're one out away. Leopard at the plate. He's hitting the two double plays. Fly to center, hit North Fielder's choice. All right, pitches outside. He's pitched in every game. Bama State trying to keep the inning alive, keep their season alive. Miami trying to get to the championship. All straight back. Alabama State won the tournament last year. Number one seed in the East. Had their hands full with FAMU ever since they got to Atlanta. Trying to keep their season alive. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Strike call on the inside corner. Morey one pitch away. The Rattlers one pitch away. Oh yeah. One and two, two out, runner at first. 8-4, Oh, Bayern yeah, U. Charles. Oh, yeah, here we go. The 1-2. You're going to have to fight if you want to win it. But, you know, I've seen it. I've been down one strike. Uh, one strike. When, and we got it. We won. So, in 1991, we did it, okay? Down to your final pitch. And that's what Alabama State is right now. Here is the 1-2. It Popped is. up, right side, right field, and Jump the Rattlers and are going to the SWAC championship game. Florida a and going to the SWAC championship game in this ninth meeting between these two teams. The Florida a and Rattlers are going to the championship as Bastardo with the catch, and FAMU will be here tomorrow as they eliminate the tournament champions, Alabama State, by the final score of eight to four. Charles Bishop with a happy Jamie Shoup. Coach Shoup, uh, you guys have fought back uh, from the loser's bracket to get into the championship game. How does it feel? Well, it feels good, especially against a good ball. I, I can't say enough about Jose and the team that he has over there. Uh, they're the champions for a reason. They held that crown. Hopefully we'll have a chance. We do have a chance now to compete for it tomorrow, and hopefully we'll be able to take advantage of that. 
be curious who we play next game, uh, watching this next game, who we play tomorrow. But just excited for my young men. Coach, you said the bats got you here. Jan Michael Bastardo started things off with a two-run jack. And that more than a jack, that thing was a ball, man. That's the furthest ball I think I've seen him hit in a while. Over the net, I believe, in left field. So, yeah, it started off good. Uh, you know, still a lot of work to do. We got one more, and I'm just happy we're playing on Sunday for a championship in the SWAC. Congratulations, Coach. Go celebrate. All right, Charles Bishop, good job. Roger Cador, man, what you do in the regular season doesn't matter. It's what you do once you get to the tournament, and that's what makes the tournament so special. That's right. I agree with you. It was really a, a great display of courage, determination, and they never give up. Never give up, and FAMU will be back here tomorrow. Who will they play? It will either be Bethune-Cookman or Grambling. That game is coming up. I'm Charles Edmund, Coach Cador. It has been an honor and a pleasure. Look forward to doing it again. I hope Centauri uh, Cent can hold on what you've done. It should be a good one. Centauria Black, Roger Cador, as well as Charles Bishop coming up. It will be Grambling and Bethune-Cookman. That'll do it here for game one. Game two coming up from Atlanta. FAMU in the championship game. Who will they play, you ask? We'll find out coming up next here on the SWAG Digital Network.